hey, silver has made some big moves in the last few days and even weeks. And I just want to take a look at the technicals and give you my opinion on what I'm thinking with regard to silver. Because I know a few days ago at around 29 here, I said silver is looking good. I gave you my reasons. Mainly, um, I think we're on a an uptrend here, and I think anything under 30 is a good deal. And I'll cover that a little bit more later. But let's just talk about the technicals right now. And you know, while I'm doing this, ask yourself what kind of trader am I? Because it will it will help you make decisions about whether this is a good buy or not. Um, for me. I know exactly what I'm doing when it comes to buying silver. It's different than trading other things that I buy and sell. I'm not so much looking at the technicals. I'm looking at more of a long-term value. So let's first start with the technicals. This red line here is the 200 moving day average. We are above that. That is bullish. Uh, for long-term type of stuff, you want to trade on whatever side you are on the 200 day moving average. We are above it and therefore it is bullish. You can see here, however, if you look at this pattern here, you got one uh, sort of hill right here. This is a sort of head and shoulders and in a slanted head and shoulders. That's one shoulder. This is the head up here, and this is the second shoulder and down. So what that tells me is technically, this could go all the way down to this blue line where the blue line and the red line meet, which is the blue line is support. You can see we've had some resistance going the opposite direction for many months, hitting right there and there and also there and right in this area. So I would not be surprised to see this thing come down to the blue line and the red line, which is right around 2588, 26 area. On the other hand, I'm not really concerned because I'm not over leveraged and I'm willing to wait. I do have a strong belief that um, this thing should be trading well over 30 and probably up in the 35 area. Looking at the RSI, uh, it, this also says that we could have a little ways to go. We're at right around 35. You know, a bottom here would be right, right below 30. You can see it happen there, 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 and there. So this may not be the bottom, technically speaking but I will still be accumulating as it goes down. Let's take a look at a longer view of this, going back way back to the 80s. In fact, wow, look at this first jump um, in 1980. This is when they, we had all that inflation, by the way, the, the first time around. It spiked all the way up to 48. And then it came back down and it did like nothing for a lot of years from 1989 to 2003. That's a long time, 14 years to be in this range of five to seven dollars. Then we, of course, we had the 2008 housing bubble and the banking crisis, and then it spiked and even and got a new high, just under 50, We're talking 49.84. Um, and surprisingly. That didn't really last either. It went back down, never quite reached those lows down to the five, seven again. It oscillated between 15 and 17 for quite a while. And then in COVID, we had another spike and a dip and another spike. And here we are now. So where do I think this thing is going based on these two other areas where uh, we had inflation back here and then we had a crisis over here. I think we're at least going to 35. And so that's why I like to buy below 30. So I've been accumulating. I'll continue to accumulate. And uh, that's been my plan. So I mentioned a few times that I'm not really a silver stacker, so to speak, in terms of physical silver. The main reason for that, I do, I do hold some just kind of for emergencies and to pass down to my kids. And they're kind of cool to just have. Um, but in terms of an investment, I don't like it just because, look here for silver maples, the, the price of silver is, what did we say, $27.91, but look, they're going for $30. You've got, uh, these are just generic buffalo rounds here, $28.87. So you're a dollar over the spot price 
that's like 5%. And then when you sell them back, you lose another 5%. So the spread for me is just too much. I think it's kind of a ripoff personally. Um, but for holding over the long term, not just for pure investment purposes, but for emergency and handing down to your kids and that kind of thing. Yeah, a little bit of silver is good. I think there's a lot of people, though, that think that hey, we're going to, you know, we're going to be trading in silver or we're going to go back to the gold standard or, you know, people are going to be buying goods and it's just not going to happen. There's no way we go back to that standard. Um, however, let's take a look at inflation. So I think most people agree that inflation is coming down. According to Trueflation, we are down, um, heading down to 1.63%. And I think we're heading for a recession personally. I think re the inflation is going to decline. That doesn't mean that prices will go back down to where they were. It just means they'll rise at a slower rate. They're never going to, we're never going to go back to the days when you can get like a T bone steak for $5.99 a pound again. Those days are gone and the damage is done, right? Um, but food and other things have risen like 20 or 30% or 40% over the last few years. But silver has not. I don't think silver has done as well as a lot of people thought. I do think there is some room to grow there. And that's why I, I hit a $35 price target. Um, why don't I go like 50? Why don't I see silver going to new records? Because I don't think inflation will continue. I know that, I, that a lot of people disagree with that and I'm willing to be proven wrong. But I think the bigger threat right now is a recession. And so that's why I'm kind of uh, hedging my bets a little bit there. One very interesting way to look at this is the silver to gold or the gold to silver ratio. Right now we're sitting at about 85. And what that means is it takes 85 coins, 85 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. And that ratio has fluctuated. The average has been around 60. So silver right now is lower in, with respect to gold than it has been historically. And what that means is there's probably more room for silver to move um, toward gold, right? In any case, um, that's one more reason I prefer silver versus gold. And it's just something interesting to watch. Looking at this from a purely fundamental uh, view, I think there's good reason to buy silver on supply and demand. Notice here, the supply of silver, I don't know if you can see this really clearly, but it's been in the 800 uh, millions, million ounces for the past decade, really. 896, it's actually gone down. We're at 823 this year. That's in terms of supply. Now, the demand for it has gone way up, starting at 457, 457 million, all the way up to 710 million ounces for industrial purposes. And it breaks this down for jewelry and silverware and investing and hedging. All of these areas are rising for the most part, other than uh, photography, which is going down. They used to do a lot of silver in the, uh, in the old photographs before the digital age. But electrical appliances and also things like uh, solar panels rising. So silver demand is going to continue to rise as we move to uh, EVs, for example, in, in the car industry, we need more, we need more uh, solar power. Um, we continue to use it for electronics. There's no real replacement for it in terms of electronics. It's much better than copper. So the demand is there. It's not going away. And the supply is pretty level. So all in all, I think silver is a good long-term investment. As long as you don't go crazy and over leverage yourself, I think you'll be okay here. I mean, this thing has gone from 32.45 down to 27.91, and I would not be surprised to see it hit that support around 26. That's going to blow out a lot of paper silver traders. So I guess the the one benefit to you know buying silver, silver stacking, is that you're never going to over leverage because you have to pay cash for the coin. You get the coin, and it's yours. Um, with paper trading, it's easy to over leverage if you think that you know. Silver is just going to keep going up if you get into that mindset and you, you put too much money in it. That's where people get burned. So just be aware of that. But again, I think with the demand and everything going on in the world, not a bad investment at all. That's my thoughts on silver.